Welcome to the channel. I'm Brett and today what I'm working on is installing lights in my metal garage. I'm going to install the light fixture in my office and the other one in my air compressor room. I have got my office painted, all the drywalls done, and I painted the outside where I'm going to be installing an exterior door here in another couple videos. And I'm also going to be installing the light here in the air compressor room. So kind of my scheme was to get a building in one day and then finish the outside so it can be an extension of our house just so we can come out here and have get togethers and things. But the problem is I have to sit here and finish it in parts so I can do side job projects in here, work on cars. But as I'm finishing the inside, I'm gonna have to sit here and finish it in pieces. So just a quick review of how electricity works in your home. You have a panel box. You have a wire that comes from your panel box over to a light switch or an outlet. And then it continues on. If it's a light switch, it'll go to a light. And then it'll travel back to the panel box. And so regardless if it's a light circuit or an outlet circuit, the whole principle is here that you have to have a closed loop. And all electrons do is flow around that loop and power devices. So what you use in homes is this Romex. It can come in different gauges. This is a 14.2, generally used for light circuits. And the 14 is just the gauge. And the two means there's two, con two conducting wires, which the black and the white wire will actually carry electricity. And the copper wire is there just for a ground as a safety. So the wires in the Romex jacket do have specific names. So the black wire is going to be your hot wire. It's the one that's going to carry electricity or carry current. The bare wire or the copper wire is your ground wire. And the white wire is your neutral wire. I'm going to leave the ground out for now, but imagine it this way. Your black wire is what hooks up to the breaker in your panel box. So essentially, you have one wire that comes over to a device that powers your device, and then you have the white wire that returns the current back to your panel box. So this makes your loop. And all of this is accomplished through one wire. So whenever you wire something, you're just gonna essentially run this wire, this jacketed wire, to from the panel box to whatever you're trying to power, and through these wires, this will make your circuit. A simple light circuit begins at your panel box. This is my drawing of my panel box. It's essentially a box in the middle are all of your breakers, and then along the two sides, there are your ground and your neutral bus bars. You tend to run out of space. That's why the panel box is a little bit small. But if you were to open up your panel box, you'd see a bunch of breakers down each side. And these are my breakers right here. So this is all you need for a simple light circuit beginning at your panel box with your breaker, over to your switch, and then a light. So how this works is you have your breaker in your panel box, the black wire comes out, and it goes over to your switch. So you connect one wire here, the other wire, gets connected up and goes over to your light. And I should have mentioned as well, I don't want this to get too confusing, but these will be in boxes as well. And so you have your black wire that's gonna carry power over to your light. And I'm going to use blue, please don't let it confuse you. It's hard to write white on white. And so your the white wire, which is also gonna be blue in this case, is going to come over and connect to this wire. And it's gonna connect to your bus bar. And then your ground comes from a bus bar. And these bus bars in your panel box, you can connect the grounds and neutrals to either side. So the green will also represent the ground. So your, your ground wire comes out of, the, out of the panel box off the bus bar. And it attaches to this other wire and connects up to the light. Now you walk into a room and it's dark, and so what do you do? You flip the switch on. 
Well, if you flip the switch on, essentially what you've done is allow the flow of electrons go through the light switch and over to the light. And then the white wire carries the power back, carries the electrons back to the panel box and completes the circuit. When you leave the room, you shut it off. Now what's happened? Now that the switch is off, the power comes from, and I use power and electrons, they're the same thing, but essentially your power comes from your breaker in your panel box, and it stops right here. And so if you ever go to work on a light circuit and you take the cover off, you're gonna get shocked by whatever screw is attached to, if you're not careful, you're gonna get shocked by whatever screw is attached to this breaker if the breaker's on. And so right here, there'll always be power. You walk into the room, turn the switch on, and now it energizes the rest of the circuit and powers your light. So regarding how the power actually flows through each wire, if you have your panel box and you have the black wire that goes over to some device, and then you have the white wire that goes back to the panel box, these two wires are gonna carry all of the current or carry the power, current, power, electrons. It's called many different things. I'm sure I'm gonna catch some flack from some electrician. Thanks for your help, Mr. Electrician. But basically what it is is, is your power or your electricity is gonna be flowing through the circuit, through the black and the white wires. Your ground wire is there in case something gets energized. So if everything is done correctly and everything works properly, this ground wire should never be energized. This is more of a safety in case something becomes energized, then it can carry the, carry the power or whatever energy is there back to ground, back at the panel box. So the setup I have in my garage is a lot more complicated because I put a lot of the lights on one circuit. And so essentially what happens is I have my Romex coming from the panel box over to my first outlet box, which is the square box. This is where I'll install a switch. The switch will control this light here. But if you look, I'm also gonna be powering these other switches and then turn these other lights from this, from this breaker in the panel box. So this wouldn't be too bad. All you're gonna do is make some connections here in the box, hook up your lights, that's simple enough. Where it gets complicated, and kind of one of the reasons I wanted to do this video is to help you understand how this electricity works a little bit more so when you have different things going on like this, you can understand how you wanna make things work yourself for your particular situation. And also just a side note, people have asked how to hook up lights and things like that. Let's just for one second pretend that this isn't here. You can certainly hook up lights one right after the other as well from a switch. So pretend these boxes aren't here. It's just like the first simple circuit, it's just you're gonna wire the lights together and one switch is gonna control them. So let's take a look at this first switch box that's gonna power this light. So right now we have three different Romex wires coming into this switch box. So now we wanna wire up this switch. So think about what each wire did in that first example of the simple light circuit. So in that simple light circuit, remember that all of the white neutral wires we're connected together. So what you can do is take all of your white neutral wires and begin by connecting those together. So all of your white neutrals will be connected together. So remember the ground wires, they were all connected together as well, except for remember I said if something gets energized, it needs to be able to, to take that electricity back to the panel box. And so it has this screw here on the side, this grounding screw. And so what it'll do is it'll have what's called a pigtail on it. You'll just hook a little wire to it. And then you're gonna connect all of your 
ground wires to it. And the reason that is is because you also have this yoke for this switch which could also, which could also possibly get energized. And so that's why that screw's there. And then all of these wires can all be connected up. And any electricity that makes it outside of the circuit could be safely taken back to the grounding, the ground and neutral buses back in the panel box. So this is where it's gonna get a little bit more difficult because what you gotta remember is you need power going from the breaker through the black wire and not only do you need it to get to this light here, but remember you also need to power these other switches to power these other lights. So what you're gonna do is connect this hot wire to this hot wire. And you're going to connect one of these screws to a pigtail. And I guess I should have said what a pigtail is. A pigtail is just a small piece of wire that you'll just connect to a screw and it'll go and connect up with the other wires. Because obviously you have three wires here, only a couple different screws. Obviously you can't put them all in the same screw. So what you have is a pigtail that you'll hook up and then this gets wire nutted or use a different type of connector to connect up your wires. And so essentially what you'll do is you'll use that pigtail to connect these two wires. So you'll make a connection here. So now this wire, this wire, and this wire will all be connected. This screw will always be hot because your breaker is providing power all the time through this wire up until it stops somewhere, which would be at this switch, except for remember, the power is gonna continue on or the electricity is gonna continue on through the circuit. This is gonna kind of be an off ramp here for this, for this other light. So electricity is provided to clear up to here. Now what you do is you're going to connect this wire to this other screw. So now you constantly have power going through. I know this is getting a little busy. So now you have power going through to the next switch. So now that's always gonna have power. But now this light here is not always gonna have power because as long as this switch is in the on position, that means electricity will flow up to the screw, through the switch, and then down to your light and turn the light on. So what I'm doing today, and this is kind of what I want you to think about, what I'm doing today is I'm putting in this light fixture in my office, and I'm putting in this light fixture in my air compressor room. But I'm not going to be hooking up this light yet. And so if you think about what was going on at this switch, of course to power this light, and I know it doesn't have a light bulb, but obviously it's a light fixture. In order to power this light, I don't need a switch here. All I need to do is connect these wires up, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. And so if you're like me and you're finishing a project in different phases, then what you can do is you can hook these wires up, leave this wire in the box, it's not hurting anything, get power over to this other light and finish completing the work that you need to be completed right now. I'm gonna start by wiring the light in the air compressor room. This is the switch box. And so what I'm gonna start by doing is making sure that there's no power at the box. So you can use one of these non-contact voltage testers. That's generally what I use. A lot of people call them death sticks, but they've always worked pretty well for me. Usually the best thing to do is go find something that is hot, turn it on, test it, make sure that it's gonna beep at you, that it's actually gonna detect electricity, then come back and test your wires. So everything here is dead, so I'll move on. When you strip this wire, lay it flat. Use a utility knife, but don't cut deep at all. All you're really gonna do is just score the jacket. And when you get to the end, I wait till I'm about three quarters of an inch out, inch out, and cut through, because that part's gonna be stripped back anyway, so that doesn't matter. But you can see is where I stripped it, the jacket has no problem coming off. And don't go back past where the wire comes into the box. Leave about six inches, I usually leave about five, six inches of wire outside of the box. Make sure they're trimmed pretty even. So 
So I'm only stripping about three eighths of an inch off from the neutral white wires. And that's because I'm gonna use a connector to connect those up. I'm not gonna use wire nuts for this. The black hot wires, I strip those back a little bit further because they're gonna be wrapped around the screws on the switch. And then all I do is just kind of make a loop. And then what that's gonna do is allow it to go around the screw. And as I tighten it down, it'll make a solid connection. This is the pigtail that I was talking about on the switch. All I've done is take a little piece of the bare copper wire, looped it around and, and kind of tighten it around the screw and then tighten the screw down. And then all I'm gonna do is use my connector to connect this up to the other ground wires. And it's a lot easier to do it now before the switch is hooked up. So I'll start with the ground wire. And these are the connectors that I'm gonna be using. All the connector does is hold the wire in place. When you push the wire in, you can actually see that it's made it clear to the end. And these things will not pull out. So this one actually holds four wires. I usually get the two or the four wires. I usually don't mess with the threes. There's nothing, it's not a big deal to have that extra hole open, but I've just found it to be more economical doing it this way. So now our grounds are connected. The neutral, remember the neutral didn't need to be broken. Okay, so there's our neutral, our neutral's complete. So we're done with the neutral because the neutral is only going to carry the current back to the panel box. The grounds are complete because we only need all these connected together in case something gets energized, take it back to the panel box. So go ahead and push that back out of the way. Now what we care about are the hot wires. And remember the whole purpose of the switch is just to break the hot wire. Once you break the hot wire, you've broken the circuit. So all I've done is loop the wire around, tighten it down a little bit, and you'll notice that I looped it around clockwise, and the reason is, is as I tighten this down, lefty loosey, righty tighty, I'm going to tighten that wire around the screw and make a secure connection. Something good to do is take electrical tape and wrap it around the screws just in case one of those bare wires would come up and hit one of those screws. Just keep in mind, at a minimum, one of those screws are gonna be hot all the time. Go ahead and push this in so it'll just kind of set in there. And then you can go ahead and tighten it up. The reason there's two wires is this switch controls this light in this little air compressor room and it controls the light in the cubby right next to it. And just like that, we have two Romex wires that had six wires total. Now we're down to three wires, we can wire the light. So this wiring in the office switch is a little bit more involved. I had to make the lights hot out in the main room, and so I put these covers on here. These are actually hot when the panel box it, when the breaker's on in the panel box. These wires continue on to make the next switch hot. 
and then this is the switch for the office light. Okay, since this is the Romex coming in, this is our hot. This is the Romex wire that needs to continue on. So we know that we can just connect the hots up. So basically what we've done now is just bypass the switch. Now it's going to stay hot onto the next switch. The neutral, you know you can just connect the neutrals. And same thing with the ground. So if you want to think about it like this too, essentially all you've done is just connect the Romex up to continue on to the next switch. Okay, so we know that the grounds just need to be connected because they connect back to the panel box so anything gets energized. I know I've said that like 10 times, but just to make sure. All the neutrals are doing nothing but carrying all of the current or electricity back to the panel box to complete the loop. Now, here is the hot that comes in. We need to put a switch here, so when the switch is flipped, now we've got, we've got electricity or current going up to the light. And I've already gone ahead and connected my other pigtail, both of the pigtails for the ground screw and for the hot wire. We'll just plug those in. And that's it. So I'm actually not gonna show the light installation because I had to get a little bit creative with both lights actually. And so whenever you as long as you follow the instructions and get to the point that I showed you with making sure that there's essentially only three wires, a hot, a neutral, and a ground coming out of a light box, you'll be able to hook up a light. So there's the light in the office. And the light in the closet. So I'm sure a lot of you have wondered why I put the light on the wall instead of in the ceiling. And I'm actually gonna be building some organizers to hang some things from the ceiling. So with those lights installed, I'm kind of over a hurdle, and so I'll be able to put out some more videos on electrical work and another one on welding to where I'm going to put that organizer up in the ceiling of that closet. And I'm gonna get my air compressor reel installed. So be a few videos coming up. So watch out for those. We appreciate you watching. Thanks.